Hey everybody, it's Kimberly with Starfish Design and Birdie Brew. Today we are working on an applique bag again. Um, I've got quite a few appliques, but when Too Little Pink came out with this Curiouser and Curiouser line, I didn't like it at first, but people kept sharing all their makes and I started to grow on me, so I had to order some. Well, I was work trying to think of a new um, bag that I could use to highlight the fabric and it came up with this style first. And I really liked it. And I thought, oh, this will be a cute applique bag. Well, the problem is for the cameos, this little thing would have come down like this. So I'm like, oh, man, that's not going to work. So I was like, well, I'll just reverse the curve and curve it upwards for the cameo. Well, I had already done all these files, like 10 sizes. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to do two listings. So you guys get two for one. So this is called Alice because Alice in Wonderland. The Tula Pink line is called Curiouser and Curiouser, and it's based on Alice in the Wonderland. So this is Alice. This one here is called Alice, and this is Alice Cameo. So you get both designs in one listing. Um, this is the 8x8, otherwise known as 7.9 by 7.9. I did this with the crossbody strap connections. This is, of course, like I said, the Tula Pink um, Curiouser line. This is that neon... Oh, I don't know if you can, it's, it's not showing up as bright as it is. The neon, um, oops, sorry, I'm giving you guys a flash. The neon vinyl from my punk broidery. Um, zipper pull and uh, zipper on this one is from um, Wizardry Stitchery. This is the one that's going to be shown in the video. And I already talked about all the supplies on the video on this one. This is adorable. Oh my gosh, I just love it. This one I repurposed some old jeans and made a, a cute one. This is um, 11 by seven, I think it is. And of course I use my two pink for all my linings. But just adorable little bags and so many options. One of my testers even left off the top accent panel and only did the bottom and it was totally cute. So this is one, uh, what well, three steps for your placement, tack down, and applique, these go together. So these are separate. So you can leave this off or leave these off if you want. They're different color stops. There's 17 color stops all together. The 17th one, of course, is just the, to stop the machine. Really, there's only 16 steps, um, but half of those steps are the applique steps. So anyway, I hope you guys like it. Um, Make sure and give me comments down below if you do, and have a good day. Okay, let's get started on this new bag. So let me tell you what all the supplies we have are first. I've gone ahead and stitched out my placement lines on my stabilizer already. See, this is for the zipper. This is the top applique, and then the corner accents. The reason why I give you this option with the placement is this way you can take your hoop. We have no-show poly mesh non-fusible um, hooped and you can go ahead and take your hoop and use it to fussy cut your pattern if you want to fussy cut it. So that's what I've done here and I used my hoop to make sure that those motifs were going to fit where I wanted them to. So we have our, our main focus fabric which I cut mine too large but that's okay. Um, then we have our backing and I'm using a smorgasbord of suppliers here today. This is um, Backstitch Cinderella woven. It feels so good. And it is interfaced with Sofuse Plus, so it brings a little bit more body. This is um, one of the shimmers, I believe, from uh, Bob and Jen's. It's kind of thick, so I didn't use it for the accents because this, in my opinion, is the hardest vinyl to use for applique because you see how, can I get real close? Focus, focus, focus. You see how it's, there's a thick layer of like, almost like a flannel-like material, feltish. It's, I find it hard to get a really clean cut. It's not impossible, but I find it harder. So I'm using this for the back to give the body, the bag a little bit more body. And then also from Bob and Jen's, they have this really cute, it's really chunky. I hope it appliques okay, um, but it doesn't really come off, but it's chunky. 
Um, and it's just so cute and pretty and it matches the fabric really well. So those are the pieces for the, uh, so we have, this is the, um, uh, the lining is piece A. So we have two pieces of lining, tulip pink, you know, that's my thing. And then this is piece B, I believe. And then C and D and then the backing is E, I believe is what I have them all labeled. And then I have my zipper and I have it cut. So it's about an inch to two inches wider than I need it. And the zipper is actually from Indo Creations. I just love that nightmare. And the zipper pole is from Wizardry. And the D-ring is from My Punk Bordery. So I have all my favorite vendors represented here. And, and this is the truth. This is about the bulk of who I order from. I've ordered from a few other vendors, some of the startups, and just not, for whatever reason, just not been incredibly thrilled. So I, um, I'll kind of cut back. So did I say seem so? They're the ones I don't have represented here. So my favorites are my punk boardery, of course, Bob and Jen's, Wizardry, Backstitch when I can afford it. Um, Indo Creations and Seam So. Um, Seam So, I really like them, but they're just um, starting up. And so it's a lot of pre-orders and trying to get to retail. And I just hate that. So I got really lucky and um, was able to get um, some of this um, backstitch fabric on. Um, I think it was on the pre-order. I don't know how I got lucky, but I did before the caps were met. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. We don't need that yet. We don't need this and this. Let's set everything aside that we don't need. All right, so we wanna place our zipper. Now this zipper tape is actually a number five zipper and all of my bags, at least since spring of 2020 on, will work with either a number five or a number three zipper. There's, there's a drawback to doing one file for both. The drawback is you have to center using the center line if you're using a number five zipper. The alternative is I could create two different files, one for number three zippers and one for number five zippers. And then the number five zipper, you'd have a little bit more reveal of the zipper showing, but then I would have to package them all up and list them separately. And then you'd have to buy them separately because you're talking twice as much testing, twice as much. So I just don't do that. I try to be as affordable as I can for my fans and so I do it this way and it's worked out well for me. Um, so I just wanted, I did cut a small piece of number three zipper tape um, to show you the difference. So this number three refers to how wide the width of the teeth are, three millimeters versus five millimeters. See the difference there? One thing I do wanna point out to you, let me see if I have one handy. These zippers, um, are different than your um, Coates and Clarks or, um, of course I don't have one handy. Um, you know, the zippers that you buy at Joann's um, and how they're different and they look bigger is that, oh, here's one, here's a leftover piece of one. Do you see how the um, nylon is so much shorter? This one's a little bit better than most but you can kind of see it's still taller. So even though it's number three and it's three millimeters wide, and it's supposed to be number, it's supposed to be three millimeters wide, but if I'm being honest, it looks like they're not. It looks like the custom zipper tape is a little bit wider, but it's an illusion because this is taller slightly. It's just very minorly taller than that. Oh, this is actually, that wasn't, that was not Coates and Clark zipper, that was, Zipper tape from cam snaps. Sorry, that's why it looks so different. Here we go. Here's a traditional zipper you're gonna find at Joann's. Now I can show you the difference and it'll make more sense to you. So now if you look at, let me get the end of this off so I can pull it. So now if we look at the difference, it's still three millimeters wide. And you see how this custom zipper tape still looks slightly wider. But when you go and you compare the thickness of it, this is really shallow compared to the height of this. So they are number three, those millimeters are the same, but they are slightly different sizes. 
And for that reason, you've got to make sure that you have zipper poles for the right type of zipper that you're using. So, find my tape here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little piece of tape on the end of my zipper so I don't accidentally pull my zipper pull off. I've done that before. This is going to get cut off in the end anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to pull my zipper pull all the way to the end. And then what I do is I start on the right hand side of the zipper. So I'm always talking about right, left, top, bottom in relation to the bag. I just find it's easier because I don't know what orientation you're going to have the bag on your machine. If you're using a, a big um, multi-needle machine, you might have yours oriented like this in your hoop. Whereas in my Janome, I have to have the zipper on the left-hand side because my arm is on the right-hand side and all the extra material is going to flop around here. So if I had it over here, it would get in the way of my attachment arm. I have gone ahead and I save, I was saving all the files in this orientation because it's only the Janome machines that don't allow you to rotate on the machine. So if it's not rotated the correct way, you would need to have some software to do that, at least as far as I'm aware. I have recently started saving everything in this orientation and just flipping the Janome files. So the Janome files will be like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I start at the end and I just overhang it. I don't overhang it a whole inch, um, but do that if you're more comfortable. I just overhang it like a half an inch and what I do is, this zipper tape is really easy to see the back of the, some of it's not as easy. So if you're using um, this kind, where it's not as easy to see that seam, what I will do is actually use a piece of um, pencil and just draw right along that line and it makes it easier to see it if you're lining it up. So when you're using this number three tape, you'll see it'll fit just about right in between those two lines. It's slightly off. These lines are one inch apart, but that is because not all zipper tape is one inch apart. Even though it says it's one inch, it may not be. Let's compare them all, okay? So this is from um, Wizardry or Luke's, I'm not sure. I got some from both of them and it's basically the same. So you see it's just a smidge over that one inch mark. Now this one here, is from cam snaps and it's fitting right inside the line so let's see if i can hold this and show it to you so cam snaps is centering right inside the two lines so this cam snaps is one inch whereas this one is just slightly over and now let's look at the coats and cart and we'll center that and it's smack dab in the middle right there. So it's just something to keep in mind. I've seen the most discrepancy with the um, number five tape. Um, it's primarily from backstitch, the type of zipper tape that is, um, the teeth are more square. I, I, I can't remember, I don't think I have a bag ready. Yeah, I do actually, this one has that. Oops, so here goes the light. This zipper tape, Oh, there goes the light, sorry. Right here. Oh. This, it's kind of, it's nylon, but it's a little bit taller and more rigid. This zipper tape is only 1.25, or I'm sorry, one and one eighth inch wide. And it really messed me up when I was working on the exposed bag. Um, so you definitely need to center it. So even if I did do a one and a quarter inch placement line for number five, this one wouldn't, would still not center it properly. You still would have to kind of center it here. Okay, so back to the order here. So I'm gonna get my tape and what I do is I lift up the end and I make sure that it is over the teeth and then I tape it down on one end. And I, for the zipper tape, I prefer using the one half inch. Um, this is 3M transport tape, but I'm out of that right now. So I'm just cutting the one inch and a half. 
So then what you do is what I call walk the zipper down the line. So just gently fold the zipper down as you go, taping on the bottom side of the zipper and try and keep the tape just to the outside edge of that zipper. And then just keep walking it down and taping every inch or so. And I always do the bottom side first and then I'll go in and tack down the top with a few more pieces of tape to hold it for a steady. Okay. So move the zipper pull out of the way. All right, now that that's taped, I can come back in here and tape at the top. And I have switched my um, thread over to the color I'm gonna need for the applique. So there may be a few steps you won't be able to see it very well. So I apologize about that. All right, and then get a big piece and tape your pole stabilize it so it doesn't move around while we're working. Okay, so now we're gonna run step two. And step two is just gonna tack down our zipper so we can remove the tape and it'll hold steady while we're doing our next steps. Oops. Oh, my thread came undone. What happened there? You know, you're not supposed to pull thread from the top but on this Janome, there's no way to open this up and get to the thread when it gets stuck in there without pulling the whole machine around and unscrewing it from the back. And I'm, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and not try to be sexist, but predict that a man designed that because I think women who've been sewing for a long time would have told them, you're out of your mind. We need to be able to access this panel and remove it from the front in case we get a thread stuck. So a lot of things about the Janome are kind of strange. Okay, I'm gonna back this up. A couple stitches. We'll start again. I don't know why it tore like that. This thread may be old because I got it from um, when I bought one of these machines. I can't remember if it was the 500E or the 350. The seller gave me a whole bunch of thread with it. It was this one. And it's some of that cheaper thread that you can get, like 80 rolls for $20 on Amazon. But I don't believe in throwing away, so I want to use it as much as I can. Okay, so now I'm just going to pull off the tape. And I can usually reuse these strips about three times. Okay, so now we're gonna build our bag, but it's gonna be a little bit backwards because we're not gonna start with the main panel. We're gonna start with the accent panel. That's gonna get top stitched down. So we wanna to turn to the back and we're gonna grab one of our lining panels. Let's see if I can do this one straight. I've been doing them really crooked lately. Okay. And you wanna put the panel face down so it's along the bottom of the zipper as you're looking at the zipper from the front of the bag. And then just center it. There's a general placement here for you to be able to center. You know, you gotta look at it with your own eyes and center it. Just make sure it's centered and then tape it down. If you're doing a really long bag, like an 11 inch wide one, add another piece of tape right there. And then what I do is I always try to hold my hand like this and pull it over like this way. That way I know this is not gonna get messed up. So now we wanna start with our long accent panel and we're gonna put that right side facing down against the bottom of the zipper and tape it in place. Now, we always wanna use tape and not rely on gravity to hold our pieces in place because the vibrations of the machine can make it come loose. And then what's gonna happen, you're gonna be like, Oh, this is moving and you're gonna reach in and try and hold it or move it back and you're gonna get a needle through your finger so tape is not that expensive yes it's a little bit wasteful but it's better in the long one than a finger a needle through your finger okay so now we're gonna run step three 
And this is just gonna tack down our lining and our panel. And you see I have a little bit more of a seam allowance because that tape is um, 1.25 inch wide. I could have, you know, placed it better so that I didn't have as wide of a seam allowance, but it's okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and flip over to the back and remove the tape. And then we're gonna fold this lining down so we can top stitch. So it's a little crooked, but not too bad. Now, if your lining panel is interfering with your attachment for your hoop, then just roll it up like this and tape it down. If it's just because you cut it too long like I did, you can actually just trim it. But I'll just show you how to do that. So you can just roll it out of the way so it's out of the way. Okay, now let's go ahead and fold this down. Now this is really thick vinyl, so it might need a couple of pieces of tape to hold it down. So I'm going to keep this against a firm surface as I press this down. Because I want to make sure that it's nice and secure. If you don't, your top stitch line is going to be wonky, and nobody wants a wonky top stitch. You'll have the vinyl thicker in one area than the other. And this is a really cute zipper tape to be hiding. This only bad thing about most of these zipper tapes that they're coming out with all these cute zipper tapes is that most of it gets hidden in the bag. But if you buy my exposed bag, it's I designed that specifically for these cute zipper tapes. The entire zipper tape will be on display. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and run step number four, our top stitch. And I can see already that this kind of wants to pucker up there. So this is where you get your stiletto, which of course I can't find my little bamboo stick. Your stiletto or your bamboo stick or whatever it is you're using, here it is, chopstick. And kind of, you can kind of get ahead of it and coast it, coax it down if it looks like it's going to roll up. But I'm not caring if this wood stick gets a needle in it. But I'm going to care if my finger does. So I don't want to use my finger. So I'm using this wood screw or a stiletto or something. Okay, now in preparation for our applique. We're going to go ahead and fold our lining up on the back again because we don't want the applique stitches all to show in our lining. It'll be in our inside of our bag and we don't want to see that. So we're going to fold this out of the way for the next few steps. Actually, I think it's like seven or three times three, nine steps. steps. Okay, so and if you need to, you can kind of roll it up and then tape it hold it out of the way as well. That way you know for sure it's not gonna come up on you. Or pin it, you can pin it to the stabilizer. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove this tape. And when you're doing the applique, there's two methods you can do. So the next step is actually going to give us a, um, a placement line. So it's gonna re-stitch this line on top of the vinyl. If you're using vinyl on vinyl, you want to try and reduce the bulk of your bag. Then you could go ahead and run that stitch, trim the extra underneath here, and then put your vinyl on top and run the tack down. And then when it gets appliqued together, that's going to form a new panel. But since we're using cotton, we're going to go ahead and do like an uh, reverse applique and we're going to put the cotton underneath so that we get more stability in our bag. We don't need to worry about the thickness. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to match up and put the fabric up underneath where the original zipper is. So I'm just butting it up against that zipper. Now I went ahead and drew a line to my center mark and put a little notch in my fabric so that I can make sure my little birds are lined up, which was my which was what I planned for this fabric. So, and I'm gonna go ahead and skip the next step 
five because all that is going to do is draw that place or stitch that placement line and we don't need the placement line for the cotton you only need that if you're doing vinyl okay so i'm going to skip that step and i'm going to go ahead and tape this down again because i don't want this final to come up on us on the side so i'm going to kind of tape it over here so it cut, catches the cotton and the vinyl at the same time. And I'm gonna put a little piece in the center. And this is gonna be hard to see because it's the same color. Mm. Okay, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. Okay, so now we're gonna run step five, which is gonna be our bean stitch and give us a place where we're gonna trim our vinyl. Sorry, I thought I hit, I thought I hit to skip that step on the machine and I didn't. This So step six, we skipped step five. Now step six is going to give us our bean stitch. And I got really close in my place um, to use to trim our extra vine. So now we can remove this tape, and I got really close down here at the bottom. Now when you're trimming your applique material, you want to use good applique scissors. I got these gingers. I really love them. There's also good ones from Kai. But you see how it has the little duck bill on the back? We want that to go against our bean stitch. And the other thing you want to do is keep your scissors as perpendicular as you can, especially when you're using vinyl. And I did forget to mention at the beginning of this, if you're using cotton for your applique, you wanna kinda of make sure, wow, this is really hard to see. I should have used a different color. You wanna make sure that you can um, um, put some interfacing on the cotton. Now I did interfacing to give body to my material but when you're doing applique you want to put like um preferably something like um wonder under is what i used to always use in my quilting days or um heat and bond light that's what's really popular right now and wow kimberly i should change the thread i think i will when i do the bottom ones it's really hard to see i can't even see i'm gonna have to take my glasses off see this yeah there we go <laughs> wow it's really hard to see y'all i should have changed the color i knew it okay so but anyway um because the cotton frays a lot so by adding that heat and bond light or any of your favorite lightweight fusible interfacings you're giving those fibers are going to be glued together to that interfacing and they will not come loose on you when you're doing this intricate applique work. So I'm just getting really close to those stitches. I'm trying to keep my scissors, and I recommend you keep this against a firm surface. Do not raise it in the air like I'm doing. I'm only doing that because I was stupid and used a color of thread that I cannot see. When I do the corner ones, I will switch out the thread color. Okay, see if you can see close up there where I'm at. Wow. Okay, do this side. If you do accidentally cut into one of your stitches, it's not a huge deal because it's gonna get covered up with the satin stitching. The only issue would be if it, um, um, if you cut so far into it that it made the final go loose. Okay. Wow, that was really hard. I think I'll switch to, there's a um, tealy color on my machine. I'll switch to that 
He said the applique should cover it up. So there we are. So now we're ready to do our applique stitch. And I like to take a piece of scrap um, in a, or stabilizer and tape on the back um, to reinforce those stitches, just to give it a little bit more body to hold on to. And, oh, I forgot to mention at the beginning, I'm using a number 75 right now, but I will switch over to a um, 9014 stitch, or number 75 needle. But I will switch over to a 9014 before I do the construction. But the 7511 is gonna give me a nicer satin stitch than the 90. Make sure you have enough uh, bobbin thread. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run step seven, which is the applique for this, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so we're all done with that first applique panel. Now we're gonna go ahead and run the placement for the squares. I've gone ahead and switched over to a tealy color, so hopefully it'll show up a little bit better for us for the next couple of steps. I'm so sorry, I'm gonna to have to cover your face up, little mouse. Okay. So now we're ready to add on our squares for the corners. Can you see that a little bit better? Before we do that, if we leave the fabric in here, see how thick these are? That's gonna be really thick and it'll be really hard to get the pretty curved edge of a final um, piece of the bag. So we're gonna go ahead and trim out, leaving about a half an inch of this material. And it's just really quick, fussy. You don't have to have a nice, pretty cut. We just wanna reduce the bulk in our corner. And do this if you're doing cotton or vinyl, either one. We want to do this. All right, I already almost got all of her little face. I might make a cute something, I don't know what. But that's all we're going to do. So then when we go to do our bag, this corner is not going to be so bulky. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and lay down our squares. So when you position your square, you want to make sure it's covering this whole line. And then it's going to, the what's left over in the seam is gonna be the seam of the bag before we trim it at least. So I kind of like pulled it, hold it up like this. So I know the top of it is over that piece and then I can roll it down and I know it's covering this side well. And then just make sure that I have at least a half an inch on either side for the seam allowance of the bag. And we're gonna do that on both sides. And again, tape, tape, tape. It's gonna be a cute bag. Somebody's gonna love it. I'm gonna have to make a strap, wristlet strap to go with it right away because I know as soon as I post this on Facebook, somebody's gonna want it. Cinderella. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and run step nine. I'm gonna keep the machine going for you well, the video going while we do this because it's just a quick one. And then I'll show you how to do the applique a little bit better since we'll be able to see the thread this time. And the smaller bags, in order to have any amount of that heart showing, it is a lot, a lot softer of a heart shape than the larger bags. Okay, I'm gonna trim off my little tails here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this tape on the side just so that doesn't come up on us because we're not cutting that away. Okay, so I'm gonna start on this one that's over here. So I'm gonna come in here from the bottom 
and we're gonna go as close to that bean stitch as we can get. And I'm trying to keep my scissors as up as I can. Make sure you don't catch underneath on the con. And I'm trying to keep them perpendicular to the hoop as I can. This is actually a lot harder than most will be because it's chunky. So I'm just taking tiny little cuts. When you're using um, something that's not so chunky, a more smooth vinyl, you actually can kind of almost slice along with your scissors like you do when you're doing wrapping paper. You know how you can just slice right across with your scissors. You can do that with applique too if you have good scissors and the vinyl's not all chunky like this one. Okay, and then go right across. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because remember we have a um, satin stitch is gonna cover this up. Now this side is a little bit more awkward to get started because the hoop is small and you have to get in there. But again, I'm trying to, I'm kind of like at an 80 degree angle, I think. Not quite at a 90, I'm having a hard time keeping a 90 with this particular vinyl. So you want as close to an 80 as you can. Or in other words, perpendicular. That's what perpendicular means. 90 degree angle to the surface. And if you need to come back in and clean it up a little bit with some smaller applique scissors, then you can do that. Um, of course, I don't have mine sitting over there at the other table, but I have some smaller Ginger or Kai that I could come in and clean this up. But there we go. So I'm going to find my scraps to put underneath here again. I don't know what I did with it. I'm gonna put over here some. And we're gonna tape that down. And then I'm gonna fast forward through the stitching after I change the thread. Ooh, don't wanna do, although it might look cool. It might have looked cool with that teal. I considered it, I auditioned it, but it's not exactly the right color of blue that's in the birds. So again, make sure you have enough bobbin thread in case your bobbin thread went low on that last run. You do not want to have to be changing your bobbin in the middle of a satin run because it will never ever look exactly the same. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and run step 10 and I'll be right back. Okay, we're all done with step 10. Now we're get ready to go get to the meat of the bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this extra stabilizer on the back. You don't have to be perfect about it. If a little bit extra is in there, it's fine. Just again, we wanna reduce the balk in our corners for sure, in our seams. And then we're gonna fold our lining back down while we do the rest of the bag. Oh, my tension is really off. You can see only purple on the back of here practically. That's for another day. I, if I'm being honest, I've never mastered the tension on this machine. It's supposed to be auto tension. I'm not supposed to have to do anything, but it's not. Okay, so remove this tape and then Fold your lining back. And I am gonna trim a little bit of this lining because it's a little bit long for the bag. I try to give a little bit generous cutting instructions just because if you don't lay something exactly correct um, and it takes up more in the bag, then you'll sh be short at the end. If you're a pro bag maker, 
then you could probably know how to cut your material a little bit shorter and have a little bit less waste. Usually one inch more than the hoop is enough, um, but I do one and a half inch usually just to be safe. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this cute little piece right here real quick. Maybe we'll be able to save that for a little charm or something. It's so cute. This fabric is so expensive, you don't want it to go to waste. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is run the step for our D-ring. So we are up to step 11. And on all the bags, um, I didn't do a four by four on this size. So all the bags except a four by four, I give you four placement stitches for D-ring strap connector two at the top and one on either side. So the reason I have it on both sides is if you're left-handed, you might want your wristlet strap to come off the right-hand side of the bag. If you're right-handed, you'll most likely want your wristlet strap to come on the left side of the bag. So you can use whichever section um, you want. I'm doing a wristlet, so I'm only gonna use this one. So you'll see here there's a placement line and if you have color issues be sh um be sure to change your thread so you can see it a little bit better but you can see even though it's a similar color you can see it ends here and ends here so if we were doing those lines we would want our tab to start right there so you want to go at the middle side so in case you're using a wider than me tab, I'm using three quarters inch, but maybe you're only using a half an inch or maybe you're using an inch. So if you start it this side there and this side there, the beginning of this one and the beginning of this, it'll be equally centered. And then you also need to make sure you have enough room for your presser foot to clear this area. I usually um, line my top of my D-ring, the actual D-ring with this top and I have enough room. So since I'm going to use the strap over here, I'm going to leave a half an inch in between the tack down stitch or the placement stitches and the D-ring so that I have room for my presser foot to get by. And I'm going to go ahead and save some stitches and just fast forward my machine till I get over to this section. And um, if you can do that on your machine, that um, you'll save yourself some thread because the tack down stitches are um, beans, so they'll use up quite a bit of thread. Okay, so I mean, you like to use a thick piece of tape when I hold this down so that the strap doesn't come undone. And what I've done for my D ring strap connector uh, with a regular sewing machine, you would want to use four layers of fabric, you would do a um, three inch strap. Fold in half once and fold both halves into the center, resulting in a three quarters inch by three inch. But my machine can't handle that much bulk because that would be four layers of fabric here, the cotton here, the lining, it's just too much. Um, so I do this way. I do for three quarters inch hardware, I do one and a half inches by three. I fold each long edge to the center. And what I do is I put the um, I cut a piece of, in this case I use Sophia's Plus, 5 eighths inch wide by two inches. I center it with the glue side facing up so that when I fuse this in place, it will hold those raw edges down. And that information is in the, in the cutting guide. And then I'm gonna go ahead and center this over here and tape it down. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run the tack down for that. And I have to be careful with my machine. It likes to move around a lot when it is done and see what it just did. It would have hit that D-ring strap connector if I hadn't lifted up the presser foot in the back. So I have the ability to lift the presser foot up extra and so that's what I did. I'm just carefully gonna pull this. Now I'm gonna take this D-ring down 
so it doesn't come loose because I did make that a little bit tight. And I don't want that D-ring to come loose when I'm doing my final stitching. All right, so just like that, we are almost done. Now it's time to put our lining on the back. So we're gonna go ahead and line it face down, center it over so that the top edge is on in line with the top of your zipper. You can see it through the material. If you can't see your zipper, you're using a really dark interfacing, then just line it up with the original placement line. That's a little bit shorter, but that's fine. And again, if you're using a really long panel, then add a piece of tape here in the center as well. For the small bags, I don't need to. And just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this extra real quick, so it's a little long. because we're gonna to wanna to tape this down securely when we do our final stitch. Okay, so hold this with my hand so it doesn't come loose and I'm gonna flip it over. And now we're gonna take our exterior back and we're gonna line that up with the top of our zipper placement, or I mean our zipper. And we're gonna go ahead and take that down on both sides. Now I do like to tape this down in the center as well because I find when the zipper foot comes along for some vinyls, it kind of pushes on it and then it, it squeezes it like this. So if you put a piece of tape here too, that'll help make sure it doesn't do that. Okay, so we're gonna run step 13 and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've done our main um, tack down in the front. So we wanna turn to the back and roll our vinyl, or I'm sorry, our lining up and finger press the seam and then make sure it's taped so it doesn't come loose when we do the tack or the top stitching. So let me tape this down here. So go ahead and just fold it over tautly and then finger press it. If you don't have fingernails, then just use a, a boning tool or some other device, but carefully because you're on the back of the hoop so you don't want it to come undone. And then I'm gonna hold it with my hand as I turn it just to make sure it doesn't come loose. Now, in the traditional bag that you sew at your sewing machine, you would top stitch at this point, the back of it. I'm not going to top stitch my exterior. I'm gonna show you the difference in what happens with an in-the-hoop bag. An in-the-hoop bag, um, everything gets stitched together um, like this, the lining and the exterior all together at the end. Whereas when you do a regular sewing bag, you're going to have the lining here and the exterior here. If you decide to backstitch this, and I said, I, or top stitch, I said I wasn't going to, but I may because I'm looking and it's, I'm worried that this is not gonna lay down very nicely if I don't. But I'm gonna show you the difference if you don't. This one I did not top stitch. So you see how the bag looks? And it has a fairly even, ends it looks nice if you decide to top stitch now this one is um thin denim so it's not going to give you quite the same look but you get a little bit of a pleat there so if you're using thick vinyl that's going to be worse and you see just a tiny little ridge of the backing on the back but you get the top stitch if that's what you want so and you can always put some tape underneath inside to hold that down um, so that's the drawback to it. So in this case, if I top stitch it, I might get that little pleat at the corners, but if I don't top stitch it, it may not lay down in the back as nicely. So it's a hard choice to make. And I feel like I think I've decided I'm gonna top stitch it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape down both sides really well, and then I'm gonna use my um, bamboo stick help coax this down as it goes along because it's really thick. Actually, no. The other problem is if I do that, then when I go, what's going to happen is this is really thick vinyl. When we top stitch, it's going to have a little pleat right there like this. And then when I fold this down to do the final, it's going to be like that. That's really thick and I don't think my machine can get through that. So I'm not going to top stitch. So just leave this folded down. 
and then we're gonna just do the double stitch here just to reinforce that step. But the goal is to top stitch the lining because we don't want the lining to come loose and get stuck in the zipper. So let's go ahead and run step 14. Oh, I'm glad I thought of that. That would have been really hard. <laughs> My machine would not have got through that thickness. Now we're up to step 15, and that's gonna do our exterior to exterior seam. So we're gonna lift this up a minute. We'll make sure our D-ring is taped down and out of the way. And now it's time to move our zipper pull over. You guys have been wondering about this, I'm sure if you've never done one of my bags before and you've only done other vendors, you probably are like, what's going on with the zipper? Why is it still not moved over? Well, because the way I do mine, you don't need to do the zipper. You don't have to keep moving the zipper. You don't need a special foot because the zipper pull is out of the way the whole time until you do the very last steps. And we're already done stitching up here, so we don't need to worry about this coming loose on us. There's a little thread here, I gotta trim that, otherwise it'll get caught in my bag and it'll drive me crazy. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and fold this down and we wanna make sure that our exterior is snugly attached to the frame with tape. Because if it's not, this, vinyl i'm not used a whole lot so it might be okay but some vinyls have stretch in them in one direction and if you don't tape it really well it might come loose and then you get a little bubble in it so i'm going to go ahead and run step 15 and i'm going to use my bamboo stick while it's running so make sure this lining is still out of the way to help coax this vinyl so it lays down. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm just keeping this out of the way. I'm just coaxing it so it doesn't lay down. The vinyl that I love, absolutely love, that has that stretch that's really te temperamental is the Stardust from my Punk Broidery. I love that vinyl, but it does have a stretch in one direction. And so when it does this stitch, it could come loose. I'm gonna lift this up so it doesn't hit that D-ring. See what happened there? I might have hit the D-ring. Now your machine, you may have enough clearance that you don't need to worry about that. But on my machine, I don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I just kind of coax it down. So I'm keeping my fingers away from that needle. This way I'm not going to get any bulge in my bag. Okay. Now we're ready to do the last step. Before we do that, we want to remove the stabilizer behind our zipper. It's easier to do it now. So I take my seam ripper and I get it underneath the poly mesh stabilizer, just so I can see the blade. As long as I can see the blade, I know I'm not cutting my fabric. And on the first one, it'll just glide right across, right underneath that seam. Then I go to the end and I try to poke out right there at the end. And I don't go across. I have found that I don't have good control when I go across. So now when we go and do this side, we're gonna do the same thing, but we need to give tension to the stabilizer that we just pulled loose. So I'm just gonna hold it with my fingers and I'm gonna reposition as I go down. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just gliding the seam ripper right across, holding that loose interfacing or stabilizer as I go, just to give it the tension that we just lost. And make sure you can always see the blade underneath. And go all the way to the end. And then I'm just going to use my applique scissors to trim the end. So I make sure I don't accidentally cut into my fabric. There we go. That's all clean. We don't have to worry about doing it afterwards. So now we're just going to go ahead and fold our lining down. And just like we did on the front, we want to pull it as tautly as we can. Just like we did for the exterior. 
I'm gonna pull the lining as tautly as we can so we don't have a lot of looseness in the middle of our bag. And as you're putting tape on the bottom of your hoop, be on the lookout for any pieces that are old and come loose, because if they come loose, they'll hang up on your machine bed and drag and they mess up your project. Okay, so now we're ready to do the final step, 16. It's gonna start at the top, it's gonna come down here towards the bottom, leave an opening and go around to the other side and start again. And this step will be slightly outside of into the seam allowance, the last step. The reason we do that is if you're doing vinyl, it has a tendency to show the stitches. So if you do another run just to the outside of it, it'll help take the tension off the seam, the first seam, and it won't show the stitches as well. Now your machine shows there's another step, 17, but that step is just to stop your machine from coming back here to the center where it could get stuck on hardware. So before we unhoop, you wanna to turn to the back and make sure everything looks clean here because we can always redo that step. So here's our opening for our, to turn it. Everything is clean here, everything is clean here. So I'm gonna move my hoop out of the way. And what I'm gonna do is remove all the tape that I can see right now because it's much easier to do it now while it's hooped. And we don't want this tape to stay in our project because some of these tapes get gummy over time and that gum see could see the through to your bag. Okay, and on the back, let's move all this tape. I need to have a contest sometime and see who can guess how thick my layer of tape is on my sewing table here. I'll just clean it not too long ago. Okay, I think I got everything. Now we can go ahead and unhoop it. So when we trim our bag, we can trim the vinyl to 1 8 inch, but the cotton we wanna kinda of leave 1 quarter inch seam allowance. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna try and reserve some of this stabilizer, because as you saw, I use this to reinforce my satin stitches. So I'm just gonna trim this off as close to the seam allowance as I can get it without cutting my project. And I'm gonna do that all around. The top is too narrow, I probably won't save that. Just the bottom and the sides. And you don't have to do that, but why not? It's a savior and you'll use that for the reinforcements. I'm sorry I'm out of the camera range right now, but it's kind of hard to stay in the camera range doing this. So I'm just kind of going in between the seams like that, in between the cotton and the lining or the exterior and just cutting it off. And then I just have the, set these aside and use them. So, oh, this is quite a long piece. We do not want to cut our D-ring strap connector to the same width as our seam allowance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of pull my vinyl back and pull this back. And then I can cut this off at one quarter inch. So I'm holding on to my D-ring strap connector because I don't wanna cut that. So actually I'm going to cut from this direction so I can see this seam allowance. So I'm folding that lining back out of the way and I'm holding on to my D-ring strap connector. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim off 
this to about a quarter of an inch. Ooh, that stuff is really hard to trim. You can trim these little corners like this if you want just to reduce that bulk. So again, we're not gonna trim that loose. And if you can get a lighter in there to trim your zipper tape, you can do that just to make sure it doesn't fray. It's kind of hard when you get it inside here. So if you're worried it's gonna fray, this is a really good zipper, so I'm not too worried. But if you're worried, what you can do as well, instead of using a lighter, is use, um, I just blew it out. <laughs> use um, some glue. There. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna fold this back out of the way. And you can just do a quarter inch all the way around and just leave the vinyl a quarter inch too if you want. But I like to trim the vinyl down to one eighth inch because I can and because then it doesn't take up as much room in the bag. Seam allowance, so I get a nicer, smoother edge at the bottom. And I recommend doing this over a trash can, not over your sewing table, but that's what I have handy. Okay, so again, I'm gonna pull this down. Now, when we get to this opening, we're actually gonna leave uh, about a half an inch tab. Can I get this angled the right way? So we're gonna leave it a little bit taller because we want to have a little bit more room to work with when we close our bag. So leave that at about a half an inch. I still have just too much there, so I'm gonna come down a little bit more. You don't need the rest of this to be that long, just the lining. So you can fold the lining back like this and trim the rest of it off even. All right, now that we have the this all work done and we don't have to worry about cutting it accidentally, we can go around and trim our lining or our vinyl to one eighth of an inch. So I'm just gonna come in here A little hard to see it. Fold this back. I think I did this backwards. I think the last time I did the vinyl first. Yes, to your vinyl to one eighth inch first. So you don't have to hold your cotton out of the way. Remember, do not cut your D-ring strap connector. Oh, why are you not cutting your D-ring strap connector, Kimberly? There's a reason why. So if you cut that strap connector, even with your bag, if you put too much stress on that D-ring with your wristlet, swinging it back and forth all the time, this stitches may give. And if you can cut this even here, it's gonna pull right out. But if you give some extra fabric, it takes the tension off of that seam a little bit because the, the stress can go through all of the cotton. Secondly, if that stitch does start to come undone, you have this in here, so you have fabric to work with it, you can restitch it. So that's why we don't cut the D-ring strap connectors even with our bag. And that is the case whether you're doing in the hoop or you're doing um, by a sewing machine. It's the same concept. I'm gonna trim these corners. I'm trying not to cut my zipper tape though. You can if you want. It's This is really stiff. I'm actually even gonna cut it. And I'm just gonna fold back and burn it a little bit because it's really stiff. Sorry, I don't think you can see, but okay. So I just folded my cotton piece back a little bit and I'm just gonna burn the edges real quick, melt it. Okay, so now down here in the corner, we wanna get a nice uh, even edge. 
to um, work with. Oh, and I don't have my good snips over here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim around the cotton and curve that edge. Same over here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna notch these corners. So we're just gonna put little notches starting at the, these scissors aren't the best for this. I think these will do it. Starting at about right there and then just do them going in about an eighth of an inch. You don't wanna cut into your stitches. So, and you see we're looking at the lining side and remember our lining stitches are a little bit farther outside of our main bag stitches. So we know as long as we're not cutting into our lining, we're definitely not cutting into our main bag stitches. And this, reducing this bulk by doing these little notches will help the curve in the bag better, help that seam curve. If you were doing a straight angle, like this was your straight, then you would want to come in at an angle like this and this, not just cut off the corner like you see a lot of times. You want to come in and reduce the bulk that's going into that corner. So again, I'm just doing little snips, tiny little triangles. So they're about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. I cut a little close over here, so probably don't need to snip too much. And the little scissors work much better for this than these do. All right, so. Let's throw all this in the trash. Now it's the fun part, turning the bag right side out. I like to use these rounded over hemostats to um, do the corners. So if you need to, you can actually use these to get the bag out. You just reach inside and grab onto it. But I'm, I can usually just use my fingers. So I just reach in one corner and work that corner to the opening. Like that. And then just be really gentle because there's some back tacking at the opening, but you could still potentially tear those stitches and then make it harder to fix when you're all done. and then just kind of work it out and the other side will kind of pull out for you. Once you get the one corner out, the other side, just kind of keep working it and it'll pull out. Push in with your thumb if you need to. Let's see how that comes out. I like to make sure all my corners are out so that the bag, the lining looks like it's all done before I close it up. It just makes it easier. When you're all done closing it, it makes it easier to get that final seam when the corner is pushed out nicely neat. So same thing here, I'm still stuck down in here. So I don't wanna close my bag yet. So I need to get that final corner pushed out and then use your hemostats or your whatever pointing device you have that out. I don't know what's going on here. It's like not wanting to come out. Okay. And then we'll get the rest of it out once we turn the bag the right direction. If you're having a lot of trouble, you can use a, a blow dryer. Um, I forgot to turn my glue upside down. A blow dryer to heat up the vinyl and um, that'll soften it up a little bit and make it easier to turn. Or if you don't have a blow dryer, you can put it in the, um, in the dryer for a few minutes on a heat, hot load. So as I wait for my glue to come down, what I like to do, this is the, the loose side, right? 
I like to fold over and fold at that seam, press it down, and I'm gonna put my glue on this thick side here. So I face it at me like this, and this is folded over inside. And then I'm gonna run a layer of glue right here, push the loose lining up into that glue and put a clip on it. Now this is um, Fabri-Tac by Beacon. There's also a three in one. They work the same to me. I don't know what the difference is between the two of them if I'm being honest. Um, but it gets really thick when it gets older. You can thin it out with um, some nail polish remover but so I just kind of do half the bag first and then I push my lining the other side up into that glue and put my little clip and it takes only about a minute for the glue to set up and be very careful make sure you leave put the lid back on this stuff because it'll come out by itself there's, it's chemicals and there's a gas that gets in there and it'll like clobber over the side of your bag, or I'm sorry, the side of the bottle. And if it accidentally necks down, it will damage your wood on your wood surfaces. If you have it on a wood surface, ask me how I know. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this clip in here and I'm gonna let it set. See what I mean? See how that little bubble's coming up? It does that, so make sure this red cap is screwed back on tightly and then you keep it in an upright position. Okay, usually by the time I get done on this side, this side is already dry, but this is a really short seam, so let's just give it for one minute. my placement stitches stayed in here. That's weird. That doesn't usually happen. Okay, I think it should be done now. And it'll continue to cure for uh, 24 hours, but it'll be dry enough and hold itself that you can finish turning the bag right side out. So go ahead and finish opening up your zipper all the way over and then you can go gently turn the bag so the lining side is inside where it belongs. Oh no, I got some scratches on here. What a bummer. I don't know how that happened. Must have been when I was turning it with the hemostats or something. Unless it was already on there and I didn't notice it. Well, that's a bummer. I've not ever had any of my vinyl ever do that before. Oh, it was from the zipper pull. Yep, the zipper pull damaged it. Leave me a comment below if you know any way to fix that. At least it's on the back. Okay, so now we get the hemostats and use them to help push out your corners gently. And if you don't have hemostats, then whatever rounded um, bag device, turning device you use. And so what I do is I, I clamp my finger, my index finger and thumb around here like this so that I can make sure I'm not pushing too far through. And then I also like to roll the seam on the side so this hemostat is pushing out that seam so I'm kind of rubbing it against it inside the bag. So on the same thing over here, we wanna go ahead and clamp our hand around it. So we're holding it tight. If you don't, then you might risk tearing through the corner. And then just kind of roll it on the bottom as well. Just through that seam. This vinyl's kind of hard to do that with. Okay, now on the sides, you see you have all this built up here. So on this side, take your thumb, put it on top of this zipper pole, 
and the hemostats underneath and push, just push it out like that. And you wanna just push it until you see the seam tape coming out like that. You see the zipper teeth? Okay, and then you can start to pull it closed and see that it's out right. Mine's not out right. Pushed in right because I can't close it. So let me work this in a little bit. So I'm gonna push that lining into the seam with the hemostats. It's kind of hard to see. There we go. Okay. So there's that. I think I can still work that out a little bit, so I'm gonna leave this zipper mostly open and push my seam hemostats in here and push just a little bit more and get that corner. There we go. Now on this side, you always have this big bulk of all that seams coming together and it's kind of stuck in there. So what you do here is take your hemostats and your finger, push it right there where all that bulk is. You feel it with your fingers? Push down into that joint and push push down and back and up all at one time. And you, It's hard to describe, but when you do this, you're pushing that seam allowance up into the seam and it'll pull out the rest of your zipper there. So you might have to do it a couple times. This is really thick vinyl, so it's harder to do. But you just push down on it where it's the thickest and then pull up and it'll pull your seam out. And I'm gonna have to do this a couple times because this vinyl is really thick. And then when you go ahead and push your, pull your zipper across, you can see, I'm not happy with this. I'm gonna work it a little bit more. It should go almost all the way across. With an in the hoop bag, sometimes they don't get all the way across, but it should go most of the way across. So I'm gonna just keep working that seam so it's going into the zipper seam allowance. There we go. And there she is. Uh, let's take this tape off. Oh my gosh, how adorable is that? And there's like barely, there's a little wrinkling right here. But hardly any wrinkling with the so fuse plus so cute oh my goodness so cute and this vinyl is really thick so i'm going to work this corner over here a little bit more because my zipper didn't want to go all the way over That is most of this is gonna get. So there's an inside and there's outside. So cute. I just love it. So I hope you guys like this. This is Saturday. What is it? Saturday the 28th. This will be available on Sunday the 29th on my Etsy shop. I wanted to hurry up and get it finished so you you guys can get it during the big, 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 huge sale. I hope you like it. Please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the like button and you'll see when I get, oh, I'm sorry. If you hit the bell, you'll get notified when I release a new video. I do a new video for most of my bags um, and I've been doing some sewing bags too recently. So that's a lot of fun, just a little bit more relaxing. I'm working on a tote bag pattern right now. I'm really excited about it. All right, guys, have a good day. Thanks.